Hey guys, Rivet Raven here, and you may be wondering why we are at the park today. And that is because of this Pokemon. And Pokemon is the reason I had this idea for this color scheme. Uh, yeah, there's no good ones that I want to catch actually. And that and that um, shiny dark uh, drowsy is actually mine already. He's just walking around. But yeah, anyway, the reason we're out here is because Pokemon is actually the reason that I had this, this colour scheme idea from Shiny Duskull Day. As you can see, it's got that red, red cloak. Alright, there's a lot of glare. No, that's, that glare is not going away. So yeah, Shiny Duskull. Oop, that's not mine either. I, um, Unfortunately, didn't catch one on on the day, but I did get a shiny. If we have a look, I managed to get this shiny Rattata, which is nowhere near as cool. But anyway, on with the video. So I got together a collection of photos because I like to have a good reference before starting any project and I kept the original Dust Skull of course because he was the main idea and then I got some old skulls and bones so that I'd have a good idea of that and also some rusted weapons. So thinking about the red that I wanted on them, I remember this old movie The Village where there's these creatures that live in the forest that have these red cloaks on and I thought that that could actually be perfect for what I want. Also if you haven't seen this film it's got Joaquin Phoenix in it when he was a bit younger and I also really enjoy this movie and highly recommend it. Alright here's me making a start and as you can see these are the blue models from the Mortal Realms issue 1. I've got two lots of them here. And if you want to check out my video of me unboxing them, that'll be linked below. So what I'm doing here is just filling in the gaps with the Citadel glue. And I made the mistake of using a fabric cloth to try and wipe up some of the glue that was there. Very bad idea because that fabric sticks to the glue. Um, I'm not sure what you could actually use. I ended up using just my finger, which worked fine. And now I'm just starting the base coat and I'm using this heavy charcoal from Game. And I find that it's not a deep black, it still picks up a lot of light on it, unlike the Games Workshop blacks. So I painted that one and then I realised, silly me, realised that I hadn't glued any sand to the base. So that's what I'm doing here. Always a good idea to glue sand to the base before you paint them because then you can paint the sand at the same time. You don't have to double paint. And here I'm just using the Citadel glue and there's probably better glues that you could use or cheaper glues maybe, but I don't really mind. I've got three of these Citadel glues just sitting around and I'd rather just use them. And I try and get the base like completely covered glue and then just chuck it into the sand here. You do have to be somewhat careful and watch where all the sand goes because you can see yep, there's a bit on the sides there but you can just scrape that off and yeah that's that's a good looking model. So I bought this red sand for my Necron and Space Marines and that's because I want to do like this red desert Australian theme with those guys but I thought well while I've got it here I'll try and just glue it to the base and see what happens because I haven't used this before so I wanted to see if it was any different from using the sand that I have. This is a ant sand so you can have a terrarium set up with ants in it and use this sand and it's all like safe and stuff. I bought it from a ant specific website that yeah they do terrariums and stuff and what I found here was instead of just pulling it out I actually left it in there because the sand that I've got is very fine 
as you can see it didn't pile up nearly as much as the other sand but yeah we'll see how that turns out later so again silly me I forgot the rocks this time and unfortunately the models, the models are actually all painted up so I'm gonna have to go back and paint over those but it's not that big a deal I guess it's just I'm making it take a lot longer than it needs to take so what I did here was the rocks that I've got are just like these cork um, cut out bits and they're actually quite big as you can see that that one piece that I put on there is quite big and that's the size of most of them so I ended up cutting them up and just having these little tiny rocks on there and I used this army painter glue that came with a bunch of other terrain pieces that I have and the citadel glue actually didn't work with these rocks it just wouldn't stick them on there so this actually worked really well and I was really happy with the way that it turned out and that glue doesn't stay white it goes clear and you can paint over it and everything and it's completely fine so I've got all the rocks glued on now haven't painted them but I wanted to show you guys what that charcoal paint looks like. As you can see, it picks up so much light and actually makes the models look like they're made out of charcoal, which I really like. And what I'm doing here with the Absidon Black is just going into the insides of the models and using that deeper black instead of that charcoal black so that there's no light coming out of the inside of the models. Because obviously you don't want that that charcoal colour on the inside. You want a, a much deeper black that looks like these creatures just have like an abyss that you're looking into, a darkness that's inside of them. So here I'm putting a yellow coat of paint on them. I ended up using these two, the sun yellow and the off-white. I use the off-white mainly because, as you can see, this yellow is just not going on properly. It was just very watery. But here's what they look like after about three or four coats, and they just came out as this bright yellow. And it's funny, they look like the good people that are in the movie The Village. They look like the good guys and not the bad guys that I was going for. But don't worry, I'm about to paint the red paint over the top of them. I wanted this yellow undercoat so that it would highlight the red a lot more. And the red that I end up using is from Game as well, though I don't really recommend using this red. I mainly used it because I didn't have another red on hand. I wish I had actually just gone and bought a brighter red. You can see that it looks quite bright here, and that's not really how the paint itself actually looks. The paint is a very sort of unbright deep red but by having this yellow undercoat you can see just how bright the that red has actually come out and this red looks nothing like that though I did mix a bit of orange into it so that it would turn the red a bit more but this was just too bright I ended up doing another couple of coats over it to tone it down a lot more as you can see here it's it's so much more toned down which is a lot better this is more of the look that I was going for. And what I'm doing here is just taking some red, some brown and some black and watering it down a whole lot and just getting into all the crevices and stuff now to really draw out those places where the shadows should be. As you can see here, um, he's probably a little too dark. I think I went a bit too dark. Um, with this guy so I'm just gonna brighten up the tips and stuff where I want him to be a lot brighter and just hit those spots where the light actually would be shining onto him because yeah I just went a little too dark with the uh, sort of wash I wanted to put over him but you know that's all right you can always bring it back afterwards especially that hump that he's kind of got on his back you definitely want the light to be hitting there 
and yeah as you can see it's bringing him back a lot and here I'm using Citadel's Wraith Bone color and what I'm trying to do is get like this skeletal look on the hands and on the skull of course because I find that the Citadel models have more of a ghostly look see here they've got such a, a ghostly look and that's not what I really wanted I wanted to have almost these skeletons that are half hidden under these cloaks kind of going around you can almost imagine these figures pulling themselves up out of graves instead of just kind of floating out and here I'm using the Reckon Land Flesh Shade I'm 100% sure I'm saying that wrong and what I'm doing is just going over the bone color that I just painted and this is going to go into all the cracks and crevices and make it look like these old skeletal hands like the ones from the photos I showed at the start and that's really the look that I'm going for plus this is going to do basically all the work for me and hit all those highlights Here I'm just taking a brown and just filling in the wooden parts. Um, I'm not going to say specifically what the brown is because you can basically just use whatever brown. It doesn't really matter, this is just what I had and that's what I used. Now I'm just moving over to the base of the models and I'm just really layering on Morn Fang Brown and I believe it is the same brown that I used on the axes and clubs and stuff for the wraiths and I've really watered it down because I don't want to have a brown base I don't want that sort of brown dirt color I want to get more of a graveyard type earth so more of a gray brown with a bone white highlight on top and now I'm just taking that same bone white that I used on the hands and skulls and just trying to very lightly dry brush the ground so that it hits all of those rocks and sand tops. So now I've got the captain here and he's a bit special because he's got three flames coming off of his triton and what I wanted to do is have green flames and the yellow that I painted on before is absolutely perfect for this because now I can just go over with a watered down green and it'll just highlight everything that I want and I use these two colors here to get that green and it's very easy just a watered down green and now I'm just taking a metal paint and just covering this sword in it I'm kind of being a bit rough with it because it's going to get washed over the top anyway to give it that rusted look. And I used Necron Compound for that because that's all I had. And if that's all you have, then you should just work with what you have. It shouldn't stop you from getting your models painted. And now here I'm just doing an equal amount of both of these washes. And again, that's mainly because this is all that I had. I don't have a bronze sort of wash that I would have liked to have for it but that doesn't matter I'm just working with what I have and I'm still achieving what I set out to do so here are the two washes the Reckland and the skeletal horde and here we have a pretty much completed model and what I'm doing is just putting down some glue and sticking on these grass pieces now these are from army painter and it's called deadland turf and there's a bunch of different ones that you can get kind of wish there was a few more smaller ones because that's mainly the grass top I'd like to be using especially on these smaller bases but as you can see you just stick it into the glue and that's done that is ready to go and now here's the part you've all been waiting for
thank you all for watching and be sure to like share and subscribe this that would really help me I have really enjoyed making these dust skull inspired miniatures and I hope you've enjoyed watching please go check out my friend's music he's done nearly all the music for this video and he's a really good artist so please be sure to check him out and I'll see you again soon with the next project.